people. The downtown homeless camp on 3rd Street is getting bigger, not smaller, as city leaders struggle with what to do. Good evening, I'm Paula Toti. And I'm Kyle Inskeep. If anyone thought closing one downtown homeless camp would calm that controversy, well, they were wrong. Yeah, more homeless people are pitching tents on 3rd Street, not beneath an overpass, but right out on the sidewalk. Local 12's Jeff Hirsch joins us live with a look at why the problem is growing and not shrinking. Jeff. Well, good evening. You know, there's, it's kind of hard to keep all the downtown homeless camps straight. The one behind me is fenced off. That was fenced off and shut down yesterday. But another one sprang up about a mile away down by the corner of Pete Rose Way and Maring Way. But then just a block or two here, stretching all along 3rd Street, is a homeless camp which began you know, a couple of months ago, just one tent, but lately has turned into a veritable tent city. You've heard of Occupy Wall Street. This has become Occupy 3rd Street. We're going to put stuff up here like this. We're looking out for the homeless. This, we at war. We're fighting for the homeless. Desmond and the leader of the homeless support group Maslow's Army, Sam Landis, put out donated patio furniture where more homeless people can sleep. And some faith-motivated people from the suburbs were providing food. We're just together doing God's work. Just this, this is what we're supposed to do. We've had a couple um, veterans, older veterans, that literally just look at us and go, you see us. That, that, that's heart-wrenching when someone just literally says, you see us. But the problem on 3rd Street in the heart of downtown is now everybody sees them. We spoke with one man who moved to Europe five years ago, just came back to visit, and was shocked by the homeless camp in the heart of his hometown. I don't think it's very useful for the people to uh, live on the street. Maybe they want to, but I don't think it's useful for them. They probably need to get a helping hand up if they can. Um, I think that what's not good for the city, I don't think it's good for anything around. It's certainly not good for business. A recent business group study found a large Third Street company with hundreds of jobs thinking of expanding in northern Kentucky instead of Cincinnati because of the homeless camps. And condos are not selling, something well-intentioned suburbanites might not think about. What do you say to people who work down here, live down here in houses and say, you're just bringing a mess to our neighborhood. Well, I think that everybody has needs, and this is one thing I can do to help these people's needs. Of course, the city as a whole has needs too, and there are questions about what a tent city in the Queen City will mean. I don't see much good about it. Now, we have just learned that the city may take action against the 3rd Street camp, the long one stretching down 3rd Street, and the new one over at Merring Way and Pete Rose Way as early as Monday. So we will keep tabs on that. And then city council meets on Wednesday. And this whole homeless issue, short term and long term, is also expected to be on the agenda next Wednesday. Live downtown, Jeff Hirsch, Local 12 News. Back to you. But Monday, Jeff, is after a long weekend of a music festival. So you, you got to wonder if people aren't on edge about that as well. Well, you know, it's a big controversy, and it, it is, it's going to be very, very visible. You're going to have thousands of people coming down here, and they're going to walk by the camps. And I know we had a story the other day, somebody from St. Louis was in, uh, you know, going to the Reds game and saw it. Obviously, St. Louis and Cincinnati are very, very similar, but, you know, apparently we have far more visible downtown homeless camps than they do. We'll have a lot to talk about at City Council next week. Thank you, Jeff. And one big concern is that unsanitary conditions in homeless camps may lead to the spread of hepatitis A. And though not necessarily connected to the camps, nine suspected cases of hep A have been reported this year.